just a little bit. Scott Geekus with the Fox Group is in Chicago. First of all, this wheat market just continues uh, to impress some people this whole entire week. We've got, uh, even though we had a little bit of a setback yesterday, we still have a lot of gains here if you compare it to where we were at the beginning of the week, Scott. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely right. I mean, re, uh, the the wheat market is definitely a big surprise lately. It's definitely the star of the the grain show per se. So, I mean, that's that's really supportive. You know, the only thing is the stronger dollar has been pressuring the market a little bit, but the market this week has been completely resilient. You know, that also could be due to a little bit of harvest, a little bit lower than usual. But uh, overall, all in all, uh, the wheat market has definitely been the star of the show for the grain report uh, this week. Uh, definitely moving, moving markets around a little bit. Not n so much bringing the other grains with it. Uh, the bean market is completely under pressure, has been under strong pressure pretty much the whole week. And we, as we just seen, we just broke that $9 mark. So if we can close below $9, that's a technical breakdown when we're looking for a little bit more downside pressure. Downside pressure all the way down to the next level of support, you think? Or do you think we can hold in here close to this $9 to see if there's some kind of news over the weekend that will pull us back up? Well, that's exactly, I'm glad you brought that up because that's one of the biggest risks going into something like this over the weekend. So I don't expect a big pullback below that $9 mark, but I expect it just to roughly stay around that $9 until we get some more direction. If we have anything that comes over the weekend, uh, bullish or bearish, it is going to move off of that $9 level. It's just going to be t depending on what the headline is. But as far as right now going into the close, I don't expect too much to deviate from that $9 mark. Uh, what about the uh, level of trade? What about the volume? Is it still pretty quiet? Yeah, it's really quiet today, even uh, with the futures as well as the options. There's really not much moving around left or right uh, at all. I mean, volume is pretty much anemic all the way across the board. really doesn't matter what product you're looking at. And it'll get even more light uh, as we get closer to next, uh, next week uh, for the holiday. Yep. Scott, we'll take a break and come right back. You are watching to and listening to the Market Day Report. Back over here to the live cattle futures. And we were talking about that gap there between the February and the April. And back at the edge of the trading floor is Scott Geekus with the Fox Group. Scott, we've narrowed that gap there between those two months. And a lot of folks say keep a sharp eye on that April contract. And now we've got a cold storage report that's going to be out here in just a little bit. And we've got the cattle on feed report. Um, what do you think's going on here between those two contracts, February and April? Yeah, well, the difference between that is now you're starting to see a little bit more demand pick up. So you're starting to see exports to certain countries that we normally don't see. A lot of Asian countries, Hong Kong, China, North Korea. So that's definitely supportive. The domestic demand is also pretty strong. So, But we're going to be working and, and focusing today completely on the placements. So going into the week, the placements were roughly average about 10.8% above last year. Early estimates today are 11.4. So if we're going to continue to see these higher placements and if the placements actually come in higher than the expectations, you know, that's going to be viewed as, as a little bit bearish. So we can expect that to have a little bit of a pullback, you know, come in Monday morning. So we have to wait and see what this number is really going to be coming out with. This number is a pretty big number. We're going to be definitely focusing on what is going to be in that number today. Does that open the door for some of the bears in this market? Market to go ahead and justify uh, a big correction in this market, or do you think uh, that a correction is due after some of the uh, some of the leveling out that we've done here? Yeah, well, I think I mean. It it's a double-edged sword. So with the big run cattle has had, you know, the trend is your friend. Everyone's watching this trend move straight up. I mean, testing that 120 mark, I mean, that's very significant. You know, earlier, about a month and a half ago, I mean, we were trading around the 110 level. So this is a big move. That big trend is still intact. Anyone is either looking to take for a reason to take profits or look for that reversal in trend. This placements mm -hmm. number is going to be that key factor to determine if that trend is going to remain intact or if that trend is going to reverse. Scott, sure appreciate it. Hope you uh, have a good rest of your day. Scott Geekus with the Fox Group in Chicago there at the edge of the trading floor, Janet. All right, as always, thanks for the update.